Hi, this is Sahana. Our today's session is all about understanding the project structure, going through each file and understanding its role and responsibility. In our last session, we have created the ASP.NET Code web application using the template. Also, we have discussed different configurations used while creating the application. In this session, we are going to use the same project and we are going to discuss the project structure. And if you don't know how to create the application and you are complete a beginner, then don't worry. I have kept the link in the description box. You can go through that video. You'll understand how to create the project and what configurations to use and why those configurations are used. It will clear all your doubt. Let's get started. This is the same project that we have created in our last session. And this is the project structure in our today's session. We are going to discuss each and every folder and the file. Uh, one more thing here you have to remember is this is not MVC project. This is simple Razor Pages project. Okay, what I'll do before getting into the discussion, I'll run the project. This is how our application looks. We have the header here. Then this is the content area. And at the bottom, you can see the photo. Whatever the code we have in our project that is responsible to make this work. The first folder that you see on the screen is connected services. Connected services. This folder lists the service dependency. If I expand this folder, we get the message saying no service dependency is discovered. If I double click here, it is saying you can see that there are currently no service references configured. Here service, service refers to the open GPI, gRPC, or the double C of service, even the web service, any kind of service. If, uh, if our application is connected to any kind of service, then we can see the dependency here. If not, then we do not see any dependency. If we want to add the service reference, then we can choose these links to add the service reference. So we are done with the connected services. I hope you understood the point. Next folder that we see is dependencies dependencies this displays the dependencies of our project let me expand this and show you here you can see already we have few dependencies these are the framework related dependencies if i expand you can see few dependencies and even analyzer has got few dependencies not only these if we install any dependency like if i install uh, if I install entity framework, then even that will get displayed here. What I'll do, I'll go to tools, NuGet package manager, and I'll go to manage NuGet packages for the solution. Just a demo uh, so that you will know if I install entity framework or any third party or any third party dependency, how it will get displayed here. I'll just search, say, I'll say entity framework core. Uh, there are no installed. I'll go to I'll click on browse. See, here I have entity framework core, and uh, the uh, the version I'll choose is 6.0.7 because we are working on the ASP.NET Core 6. So even the entity framework should, even the entity framework version should match. So I'll select the project and say and I'll say install. Uh, earlier, this packages was not there. The time we installed entity framework code, we got packages as well as inside the packages, this Microsoft.entity framework code dependency. This is the dependency and it is displaying here. I guess now you are clear with what the dependencies folder contains and what role it plays. The next option that we have is properties folder. So what role it plays in our project? Properties. This folder contains the project specific settings. See inside the properties folder, you find something called as launch settings.json file. This is very important file and this file contains the contains all the project specific properties. And look at the look at the file format this is a special file called as json file json stands for javascript object notation this file is mainly used to describe the data in text format 
that are used for storing and transporting the data. Uh, coming back to the settings here, uh, one more thing that you should remember is here, you know, settings are stored as key value base. Your II settings is the key and whatever and whatever you see inside these curly braces, this is the value and here profiles is the key and inside and this is the value. IIS express is the key and these are the values for that key. If we have to talk more about this file, this file controls or you can say configures different aspects of your application and this contains the settings for your local development machine. Um, here you can see the profile section. Here cool asp.net.net core app is the profile name. This is the first profile and IIS Express is another profile. If you see here, this is our project name, coolasp.net core app. This is the project name. The first profile has got our project name. The second profile is IIS Express. Here currently, if you look at this green color arrow, IIS Express is selected. Then the settings inside this profile, they are applicable. If you ask me how to change the profile, then I'll come here. Here you can see drop down. If I select a project name, then I have changed the profile. Now what I'll do, I'll just quickly run the project. Our, see, this is our web application. At the top, if you see localhost 7046 is the port number. If I come back here, the profile that we have selected is our project name. Coolasp.net core app is the profile name. If you see the application URL section, you can see here localhost colon 7046 is the endpoint that is displayed here. So you can see that how profile affects how our application works. Command name key is very important because the command name key decides which web server to launch. If the value is mentioned as project, then Kestrel web server is launched. If the if the value is IIS Express, then instead of the Kestrel web server, then, then the IIS Express web server is launched. Don't get confused with the web server. What is it? What is Kestrel or what is IIS Express? I'll cover this thing in another session because this is very important and you should know about. I don't want to mix the server related detail in our project structure related session. Let's understand the project structure and surely I'll make a video on the servers. There you will understand these different servers. You can see one more session that is IIS settings. If we choose IIS Express, then our port number will be 44315. Just a quick demo, I'll change to IIS Express and I'll run the application again. Let's verify the port number. See, the port number is 44315, which is coming from the IIS settings. You can see different keys here. Windows authentication, then anonymous authentication, if we had selected windows authentication instead of false we could have seen true here but we have not chosen windows authentication so the value is false then oh, i guess you know the application url we have already discussed command name and you can see dotnet run message this is whether to display the dotnet run message or not then launch browser true this key, this property is controlling how the browser should react, whether it should launch automatically or we should open it manually. Now you are getting how the launch settings file is controlling our application. Then environment variable. This is whether the environment what we are working is development or the staging or the production. If, if you don't know about this, just a quick information for you. Uh, whatever the developer works on his machine, that is the development environment. Next folder that we see on the screen is www root folder. www root folder. This folder is used to serve the static files. Now, what are these static files? Static files are nothing but the files like CSS files, JavaScript files, then the HTML files and such files. If I expand the CSS folder, you can see site.css and if I expand JS, you can see the JavaScript file. JS stands for JavaScript file. I already told you, right? This folder is used to serve the static files. Nothing but you can directly access these files. My application is running, right? So 
uh, if any file is there inside this folder, I can directly access that folder with the base URL. See, localhost, uh, the port number is my base URL. If I say slash and the folder name. So, my folder name here, my folder name is CSS. I'll just take the example of site.css. My folder name is CSS and I want to access site.css. See, I'm able to access the file. This is the meaning of we can directly access the file or the folder serves the static files. Next folder is pages folder. What it is used for? Pages folder contains the razor pages that meet the view. See, this is the razor page. Razor page is nothing but it's kind of HTML page. Here you can find the HTML markup. But the thing is, you can embed the C sharp code with a special syntax. Uh, if you know HTML and if you know C sharp, understanding the razor page is not at all a big deal. That especially it helps the C sharp developers because we know C sharp language. And if you know HTML, you can combine the power of HTML and C sharp and you can design the view. So that's fantastic. We are at the pages folder. Here you can see the shared folder as well as some uh, files with the extension CSHTML. These are called as razor pages. Combination of two files. One file is with the extension CSHTML and the other file with the same name CSHTML with .cs. The file with the extension .cshtml that contains the HTML markup with C# -sharp code using the razor syntax. But you can see another file here .cshtml .cs. So this is the C# -sharp code that handles the page events. If you have error page, then all the page events related to that error page has to be handled inside the page named error.cshtml.cs. The same way for every file you will have. CSHTML as well as .cs file. Uh, one more thing that you should remember is the application that we have created is simple razor pages application. It's not MVC. So you are not finding any model view and controller only the pages folder. Now these are the uh, files that make the view but there is one more file with the name shared. So what is there inside this folder? So you can find the underscore layout and underscore validation scripts partial. Underscore layout is very important file because this file decides the layout of our application. If you see here, this is kind of HTML document. You have doc type, then you have HTML, then you have the header, then you have the body inside, then it is ending with the HTML tag. Inside the body, we have header, then the div and the footer. This header is responsible for our header. This is our application and this is our header. If I expand this header section, see, we have a nav element. Inside this nav, see, we have home and privacy. Can you see home and privacy here? So, this is our header and here we, here we are designing our header. And this is the footer. At the end, we have a footer and here we are writing some information. Can you see at the end? We have a footer and the same content is coming here. Uh, we call this as content area. Inside the body, we have a div tag and inside that you can find something called as render body. This is the place where the content gets displayed. If we are at home page, home page, then the this render body delivers the content of home page. If we click on privacy, then this render body renders the content of privacy page. Layout page underscore layout page is responsible for the layout of our application. Next, you can see underscore validation scripts partial. If I open this, you can find the reference to some scripting files. This file, uh, this file is used for the client side validation. Let's talk about view imports file. View imports file contains the directives that are shared by all the views. Here I have opened the view imports file. You can see that we are already having the using directive, then the namespace, and we are 
and we are having the add tag helper so if you want you can add a few more things if you want you can add uh, any other tag helper like remove tag helper or if you want some model to be available across all the files then you can mention that with at model in short whatever you mention here whatever you write here that is available to all the pages you can see all the files now i'll open underscore view start file see the existing code here we have mentioned the layout file because the code in this file runs before each view as the name itself says view start next next we have something important that is app settings.json file this file contains the application configuration settings let's say if you want to set up database then connection string is stored in this file next we are going to talk about very important file that is program.cs file this file is the entry point of the application that means the execution starts from this file you will understand these lines of code before that have you noticed we do not have any main method over here this is because from dotnet 6 onwards we don't write the main method compiler will do the job for us this line of code initializes new instance of web application builder and it will use the pre-configured defaults once the instance is ready this is related to dependency injection. Here the framework is registering our razor pages service with the ASP.NET code dependency injection container. Dependency injection is very important concept and I'll make a separate video on that to explain you everything about dependency injection and how it is related to .NET framework. Now you understand that the framework is registering the service with the ASP.NET Code Frameworks Dependency Injection Container. Even if we create some user-defined service, then we have to register that service with the Dependency Injection Container and this is the place. This particular piece of code is building the application. After registering the service, application is built. Then, next, these lines of code, they are responsible for configuring the middlewares. Again, middleware is very important concept and you can expect a separate video on that. For now, you understand middleware is related to request and response cycle. With this, we have come to end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed the session and there's a lot more to learn about this framework. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon in my next video. Thank you.